Welcome to Highline Excel 2016 class video number 13. Hey, if you want to download this file, Business 218 video 12 to 14 start file and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're still doing in video 12, 13, and 14 lookup formulas. And here's the situation. One lookup value to return multiple items. Now here's the one lookup value. And if we tell our lookup formula to look through this column, the first column, well, there's duplicates. In our last video, we saw what happens when we have duplicates. Our lookup formulas don't know how to automatically then pick out, for example, event one, event two, event three. So here, we want to look this up and return down here the different events. If I change the one lookup value to this server, then I need to return event one and event two down here. Now, there's no built-in lookup function that can do this. And fundamentally, the problem is when I select this particular server, I actually need in my lookup formula row three or relative position three, five, and six. Once I have all those, then index function could go ahead and pull the third, fifth, and sixth value out. Now, before we do our formula here, we are going to have to count because the count is going to be part of this formula. So up here, I'm going to say equals count ifs. The criteria range, I'm always going to be counting how many server computers there are. So right now, there are three. Now I want to come down here, and I'm ultimately, as we have done in the last couple of videos, we're going to use index. And in this array, I'll highlight this whole array here. The problem comes from row number because we have multiple row numbers. So inside the row number is going to be a big array formula that creates the relative positions, meaning in an array it'll create 3, 5, and 6. And then we will have the small function that will pull out, as we copy the formula down, relative position 3, 5, and then 6. I'm actually going to escape and start on the inside. I first want a formula element here that gives me all the relative positions, meaning 1 all the way to 7. And the most robust way to create this is to use the row function. And I'm going to look at any one of these columns in the data set, F4 to lock it, close parentheses. Now, row would simply give me 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I hit F9, you could see. That's not what I want, Control-Z. So from that, I subtract row, and I'm going to take row of the first one. Notice that's 5, F4, close parentheses. Right now, it'll say 5 minus 5, 6 minus 5. When I evaluate this whole thing, it gives me F9, 0 all the way to 6. I really want 1 all the way to 7, so Control-Z plus 1. Now I close parentheses. Now there are other ways we could use the row function and highlight rows A1 to A7, but this right here is the most robust. If I insert rows above or below or move it or do whatever, this will always give me an array of relative positions. If I highlight this in F9, and notice there's my complete list of relative positions, all of the possible records. But I only want 3, 5, and 6 in this resultant array, Control-Z. So I'm going to choose to use division and then ask, hey, are any of you in this column, F4 to lock it, are any of you equal to the server name, F4 to lock it, close parentheses. That gives me trues and falses, F9. Notice a false will be in the denominator, so the divide by 0 error will be our filter. When it sees a true, it'll take relative position 3, divide by true, which will be 3. Control Z. Now I can highlight this whole thing, and when I hit F9, there is our filtered list of just the relative positions I need. And I would like to use the small function wrapped around this. So as I copy down, I can pull out the first smallest, the second smallest, the third smallest, Control Z. Now I'd like to use the small function, but the small function will require Control Shift Enter. But since 2010, we've had the aggregate function. Now, the aggregate function has been around since 2010. It has a list of functions. Only the functions 14 and 19 can handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. And there it is. There's small. So I'm going to select 15 as our function. That tells aggregate that it is now the small function, comma. I'm going to 
ignore error values. There's the six that will ignore those divide by zero errors, comma. And there's the whole array, F9. There it is. Small is going to be looking at that, Control Z. Finally, I come to the end, comma. And the K, I need one, two, three, four as I copy down. So we use our formula element for creating sequential numbers and formulas, rows. Now I'm sitting in E11, so I type E dollar sign 11 colon E11. Notice this 11 is locked. This one is not. Right now, rows reports how many rows are there from 11 to 11. Well, there's one. But that 11 will turn to 12 and then 13. Thus, rows will report how many rows? Two, and then three, and so on. Close parentheses. And let's just see if this works. This is aggregate as small. And as I copy it down, it is going to work fine. There's the three, five, and the six. Those are the relative positions inside of index. So index, array is always the values we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. So those are events, F4 to lock it comma, and there it is. Row number, that whole big aggregate with its array calculations, is simply there to deliver the right relative position to index. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and copy it down. Now we'll fix the num errors in just a second. But let's go ahead and try this. Boom, boom. Each time it is looking at a single lookup value and returning multiple results. Now to deal with the num, I'm going to notice I counted up here. So as I go down, when it gets past, in this data set, row 3, then I want to show nothing down here. I want to only run the formula up here. When this automatically changes to 2, then I want the index to run here, but I want to show nothing all the way down. So that's easy enough. We can use the if function. And watch this. I'm going to come to the end, click on K, Control C, because in my logical test right there. Whoops. I'm going to Control V. I'm going to say, when rows, that's the number incrementer, 1, 2, 3, as I copy down. When you get past 2, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. If the formula is past row 2, comma, then what do I want? I don't want to show anything. Double quote, double quote. That's a zero length text string that will show nothing. Otherwise. If I'm not yet past row 2, then please run your big array formula. Now, this is an example of a formula where you don't want to use if error, because if error would rely on the fact that this array formula would have to run in every single cell. Right now, when I have only two records being returned, index will have to only run twice. The rest of the times, if will just dump this zero length text string into the cell. Close parentheses. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. And there, if we come up here, instantly we get our result. Now, that is pretty complicated because there's no built-in way for a lookup formula to return multiple matches. You know, if you remember back to Access, our study in Business 216, the prereq class, really the solution would be to use Access, right? And simply have this as the criteria in server name column and the event being returned. However, this is a common enough request and task in Excel that this type of formula will do it. All right, next video, we'll have our last video, video 14, about lookup formulas and functions. All right, see you next video.